Okay, so I'm gonna be Pokemon Violet in its entirety using only terrestrialized Pokemon. This includes getting all eight gym badges and becoming a champion, beating all five team star bases to the ground, defeating all five Titan Pokemon with Arvin, and finally, I'll take on the true final boss of the game, who I won't mention for now, for spoiler reasons. All right, all right, all right, before you push up your glasses to tell me, well, all Pokemon in this game can terrestrialize, I know that, okay? What I'll be doing is adding a few rules to make it unique. First, I'll only be using brand new Generation 9 Pokemon, so no Lucario's or Charizard's here. Secondly, they must have a unique terrestrialization type. This means I'm less likely to have access to the crazy stab move advantages that terrestrializing would normally give. And finally, I can only have one of each Terra type, which will stop me from using only the overpowered typings. Happy now? Of course you're not. Fine, I'll slap on some hardcore Nuzlocke rules to make it more of a challenge. Do forgive the intrusion. I am the director of Yuva Academy. You may call me Mr. Clavel. Um, mum, why are you looking at him like that for? Tic Tac, I've got a thing or two to discuss with the director here. Why don't you head back up to your room and finish getting ready for school? Hey mum, have you seen my bag? Wait, well, why is she locked in the room with director Clavel? You know what, that's none of my business. Right. So the first obvious problem is that the starters do not get a unique terraform. But at the same time, we can't proceed without getting one, so I grab myself the grass cat for now and use it to beat up Nimona's Quaxley. Uh, why the heck did we just collect a Lechonk care for? I'd much rather we didn't pick that up if I'm being honest. Let's exchange numbers so we can get in touch if we somehow get separated again. For more tips on how to pick up chicks, like this video and subscribe to the channel. This is Arvid. For some reason, this guy looks like he's about to transform into a Super Saiyan 3. Well, good luck with that. All right, I've had enough of this pathetic grass cat. In fact, you know what? Yeah, see ya, buddy. We get to the school, and of course, no Pokemon game is complete without the region's dangerous and evil team. Uh, is this girl okay? Yeah, okay, something's definitely wrong. She seems to be cheering for me in this fight. I had your smartphone so I could talk to you. Hope you don't mind. Uh, yeah, I, I do actually mind. Thank you. Maths with Miss Time. Hmm. All right, let's give it a shot. One Pokeball is $200. If you had $2,000 and bought as many Pokeballs as you could afford, how many would you receive? Let's just say something stupid. Wait, what? With all the school stuff taken care of, we can finally do some exploring. The first thing on the agenda is to actually get a Pokemon I can use. The very first Terra Raid Den we run into is a Pormi with a Steel Terra Typing, which is actually a decent find. Here's a question for you guys. Out of Mega Evolutions, Z Moves, Dynamaxing and now Terrestrializing, which is your favorite battle mechanic added into the Pokemon games? Let me know in the comments below. Because one Pokemon is not enough for the first gym, we continue the hunt and it's not long until we find a Rock Den. Oh, it, it's a Tarantula. Now on paper, this is not the best encounter, but to be fair to the little guy, it does evolve at the level cap, giving us a decent Pokemon for the first gym. We start the battle with Katie, and Green Goblin can terrestrialize into a rock type, which allows him to resist their moves, while Silk trapping and bug biting his way through Katie and her gym. Meanwhile, Teddy was chilling in the Pokeball, enjoying the show. After my dominant display, we grab our first gym badge of the run. Not satisfied with the team, we go on another Terra Raid hunt, and this time we hit the jackpot a Mankey with a Fairy Terra. This thing will be a huge addition to the team, and, oh, it, it's level 20. In the box you go. Still wanting to add another team member, we continue the search and find a Grass Terra Mastiff. This is actually a solid encounter because it has Intimidate. Right, time to take out the Stony Cliff Titan. Sheesh, you're looking kinda large there, buddy. Might wanna dial down on the food. Oh no, I pissed him off. Russo can 1v1 this oversized crab by terrestrializing into a dark type and biting his way through. Although it does get a little too close for comfort, so in the double battle with Arvin, Green Goblin switches in and I can slay the first Titan of the game. Inside the cave, we find the herb and Arvin makes us a sandwich and gives us a badge. Do you wanna give your sandwich to Maridon? Um, no, this is mine. Next up is Artisan City and its grass gym leader, Brassius. Once again, it's the Green Goblin Show. We outspeed and take out the Petty Lil with a Bug Bite. Small of his next, and another Bug Bite from the Green Goblin gets the kill. Last is Pseudo Wudo, 
and it actually hits me hard with a rock throw. Bug Bite does decent damage, but it's not looking good. We trade hits until Green Goblin gets low on health, allowing me to switch in Russo to deliver the final blow with a bite. Wow, Brassius did not take this loss well. Although the guy does still give us our gym badge and takes a photo with us. After the battle, Teddy also evolves and now she can start getting involved in fights. The open sky titan is next on the chopping block, but before I head that way, I need to add some more firepower to the team. First, I find a Watt Rail with a poison terror typing. Then I take Teddy for long walks to try and get her steps up, but unfortunately there's no way to track them, so she ended up leveling up without evolving. Because of this, we need to continue, so we scale the mountain while dodging as many boulders before finally facing off against the Bombardier. During the first phase, Teddy can terrestrialize into a steel type, resisting all its moves and only just 1v1 this stupid bird. We start the second phase and we've not healed, so I switch in Russo to drop its attack with Intimidate. Green Goblin then comes in, terrestrializes into a rock type, and takes it out with a knackly. By the way, I've had enough of this Green Goblin slander. This bug is the only reason this run is still on with zero deaths. I appreciate you, buddy. Arvin then gets his hands on some more herbs, and once again makes us a sandwich, and gives us another badge. Also, Maradon's learnt how to swim now, so that's kinda neat. I take Teddy on some walks, as I really want her to evolve, but once again we have no luck. Finally, we can start taking down some Team Star bases. First on the list is Giacomo and his Dark Types. We head to his base, beat up his grunts, and then he finally shows his face. And well, with my team of fighting and bug types, this was a joke of a fight. Pornard leads, but one brick break from Boogeyman ends its life. Now it's a Starmobile, and both Green Goblin and Teddy can tag in to bust up the car. Giacomo hands over his badge, and that's that. Probably don't remember you, really? I look more like an NPC than you do, Eevee girl. I'm good with machines and hacking stuff, so I'll be working behind the scenes. Wait a minute, hacking stuff? Where have I heard that before? Next up is Nimona, but before we can beat up her Pokemon, I recruit a Smolov with a water terror typing. Right, Nimona time. Rock Ruff, Brick Break. Pour Me, Stomping Tantrum. Quaxwell, Spark, Twice. Yep, ladies and gentlemen, this is my rival. Okay, enough is enough. Teddy, I'm going to evolve you. Thank you, Teddy. Now it's time to add another gym badge to the collection with the Iono standing in the way. A newly evolved Teddy takes a lead and two spikes take out her Wattro. Bellybot is next and a couple of digs gets a kill on this tanky frog. Luxia switches in and drops my attack with an Intimidate, which is a big problem. I give Iono a taste of her own medicine, so I switch in Russo, intimidating her Luxio and eating a bite. Teddy then switches back in using his Vault Absorb ability to heal from Luxio's spark. Pivoting 101, ladies and gentlemen. This is followed up with a big dig, bringing Iono to her last Pokemon, Miss Magius. Although this levitating electric type has no weaknesses, Teddy is too strong, and back-to-back -back arm thrusts take it out. For some reason, Iona gets dizzy after the battle, but she still hands over the badge, and now we are on a roll. Also, after the battle, Zapdos evolves into a killer Wattrol, adding another fully evolved Pokemon to the team. Mela from Team Star is our next target, and while preparing to take her on, Salad also evolves into a Dolu. We raid the base, and it's not long until Mela comes out, and this was a tough fight. Teddy uses a super effective dig on a Torkoal, not even doing half damage. Her stupid turtle then hits us hard with a sun boosted critical hit flame rule, rendering Teddy useless for the rest of the fight. Russo tags in, intimidating the turtle, but still taking decent damage. Now I switch in Zapdos, taking damage from the flame wheel. On the next turn, we outspeed and Thunderbolt the turtle straight back to Mela. Next is a Starmobile, so I switch in Russo again to get an Intimidate off. Zapdos comes back in and using both Roos and Thunderbolt, we get the car low enough on health for the Boogeyman to switch in and take it out with a stomping tantrum. Mela admits defeat, giving us the badge and apparently breaking our hand. Right, so who am I fighting exactly? Is it you or the Rufflet? Now we need to make the long journey to the lurking Steel Titan. Along the way, Boogeyman evolves into a Primeape, and we're one step closer to one of my favorite new Pokemon. The newly evolved Boogeyman doesn't get much time to settle as he beats up the giant Orthworm until it retreats. The Worm takes some performance enhancing herbs, powering it up, but Boogeyman is still too much for this guy, taking it out with some more low kicks. That's the third Titan taken care of, and another badge in the bag. Okay, how have I never visited the nurse in this game before? After flirting with the nurse, our focus is right back on getting those gym badges. Oh, and before I forget, Russo does evolve into a Mopostiff. So do you have something super important to say to us busy folks or what? Yeah, it's actually super important. Maybe a little battle will shut your mouth. Um, that wasn't really the response I was expecting. After teaching Kofi's student a lesson in manners, 
we head back to the town to take on the big man himself. First up is Veluza, and back to back sparks from Teddy take out his fish. Next is Wog Trio, and one more spark sends it packing. Last is his Crabominal, and Teddy is too low on health to stay in, so I switch in Russo, who can intimidate this crab. Crabominal terrestrializes, and Russo is just too nimble dodging his crab hammer. From here, Russo terrestrializes himself into a grass type, and he can 1v1 the crab. Uh, Kofu, uh, you know that you just lost that battle, right? Yep, he does. He's just given us our gym badge. We haven't paid Team Star a visit in a while, so the poison base is our next stop. On the way there, we run into a raid den, getting a Pornard with a Bug-type Terror. This guy looks like he'd rather be anywhere else than here right now. Got some bad news for you, buddy. It's about to get a lot worse. We storm the base, and his leader Atticus comes out of hiding, and we begin the battle. Teddy terrestrializes into a steel type, becoming immune from poison moves. Two digs later, and the first Pokemon Skun Tank is out. Now it's Rever Room, and it crumbles to a quite effective dig. Muck is next, and it takes two more digs to put an end to this blob. Finally, it's the Starmobile, but Teddy is pretty low on health, so Russo comes in and starts whittling it down with crunches. Once Russo gets low, Boogeyman jumps in and finishes the fight with a stomping tantrum. Atticus can't believe it at first, but later comes to his senses and gives us a star badge. With the new level cap, we're now at a point where we can get some big evolutions. But first, we actually run into a den with a ghost terror, which ends up being a glimmer. After that and some training, Salad evolves into an Arbolivar. Boogeyman then rage fists the entire Hoppet population, allowing him to evolve into one of my favorite new Pokemon, Annihilate. And finally, the newly caught Heartless becomes a Glamora. Larry's our next gym leader, and well... Thanks for lunch, Larry. But hey, I found Tic Tac first. You can't go stealing him from me. Suppose I'll get in line then. Um, sorry ladies. My hat already belongs to the school nurse, Miriam. Oh no, guys, it's another rival battle with Namona. Whatever shall I do? Next, we make our way through the snowy mountaintops to take on Ryan. I've got three gym badges, but failed the interview at the Pokemon League. Hold up, why were you even allowed to take the interview with only three badges? We get to Ryan, and this coward has no problems rap battling a little kid, but when I take her up on her challenge, she refuses. Fine, we'll settle this with a double battle. Russo and Boogeyman take the lead against her Mimikyu and Burnett. We start off strong as Russo can intimidate both her Pokemon. Boogeyman terrestrializes into a fairy type, eating two Shadow Sneaks that would normally be super effective. Then we double up on the Burnett, taking it out with a Shadow Punch and a Crunch. From out of nowhere, the crowd cheers Boogeyman for terrestrializing, losing his Ghost Weakness, and literally giving him a free boost in every single stat. From here, we continue to double team, and we take out her Houndstone. Toxtricity comes in next and terrestrializes, but a big shadow punch from Boogeyman destroys it. Russo then breaks Mimikyu's disguise, allowing Boogeyman to finish the fight with one last shadow punch. I told you, Rhyme, should have let me have a rap battle with you. We then grab the badge and we're done with this city. Back to the desert we go as the quaking earth titan needs to be stopped. Salad can deal with this oversized Don fan pretty easily in both phases, taking it out. Now it's Arvin, Herbs, Sandwich, Photo. Oh, and we can fly now as well. Oh, it's Namona. Show me the battle skills that got you six badges. Okay. Tulip is the next gym leader, and at this point, I want to give Russo some love. So I slap an expert belt on the dog, and into battle we go. She leads with Farigaraf, and Russo was feeling a little peckish, one shotting out with a crunch. Now it's a Gardevoir, so Russo terrestrializes into a grass type, doing massive damage with a crunch, and eating a dazzling gleam. We follow up with another crunch, and down goes the Gardevoir. Espartha switches in, but can't handle a crunch from Russo, going down. Last is Ephlogis, who helps me out by terrestrializing into a Psychic type, going down to one more crunch. Don't go uploading that selfie we just took to social media, okay? You know what? I think I will. Thanks for the badge, by the way. Our next destination is the Snowy Mountains, where our last gym battle awaits. We enter the battlefield, and um, the, the last gym leader is a, a Pokemon? Scratch that. There she is. Wait, that, that's a he? You know what, let's just battle.
I'll take my badge now, please. Team Star is next, and this time it's the fairy base that needs to be raided. Ortega does come out, although it's a waste of everyone's time. Boogeyman is out and straight away bolts up while terrestrializing into a fairy type. This now means that play roughs do pathetic damage, allowing us to set up. Azuma will then force for an earthquake. Wigglytuff comes in only to share the same fate. Dash Bun is actually tanky enough to survive, but even a critical hit play rough only tickles us. Good try though. Now it's a Starmobile, but the plan doesn't change. We trade blows until... Okay, so the plan will change. Heartless switches in and puts an end to this stupid car with a couple of Venom shocks. Ortega hands over the star badge and we only have one more base to take care of. The end game is near and the next order of business is the false dragon titan Pokemon. Actually, before that though, our girl the queen evolves into a Bisharp. Back to the false dragon. Salad is just a perfect counter for this oversized fish as it can take it out with Mega Drains and Leech Seeds. Although, it actually turns out that the Tatsugiri is the true Titan we need to take out. Now, this little guy does have Icy Wind, but Salad can terrestrialize into a Water type and slowly take it out with Leech Seeds and Mega Drains, giving us another easy win. We have finally slain all the Titan Pokemon and collected all the herbs. Also, Maradon is basically Spider-Man now. Before we can continue to the Elite Four, there is one last Team Star base we need to raid. But before that, I want to evolve the Queen, and to do that, we need to, um, kill other Bisharps. Uh, okay, that's kind of dark, Nintendo. So I need to kill the ones that have the children next to them. I mean, how badly do I want this evolution exactly? Yeah, I want it pretty bad. Totally worth it. We storm the last base, slaughtering the Pokemon until Eerie comes out. Her Toxic Croak refuses to go for anything else other than a super effective Sucker Punch. The problem is, is that that move will fail if I'm using a setup move. So as it keeps failing and failing, Boogeyman is getting stronger and stronger. After five failed Sucker Punches, Boogeyman goes off his leash and goes on a rampage, destroying all her poor Pokemon. Her Star Mobile does survive one hit, but then breaks down when followed up by another Earthquake. We have defeated Eerie and now cleared all the Team Star bases. In fact, we've cleared all 18 tasks given to us at the beginning of the adventure and we can finally start the end game. First on the agenda is the Elite Four and the champion battle with Gita. Rika starts off the challenge and Salad just wins this fight on her own. First to go down is a Wish Cash with a quad effective Giga Drain from Salad. Rika thinks she's clever by bringing in a camera up, which is a fire type, and normally that would be. Little does she know that Salad can terrestrialize into a water type and one shot it with a quad effective water type Terror Blast. The rest of her team has no answer to Salad, as one by one they all fall to my Olive Branch, giving us our first win in the Elite Four. Next we have Poppy, who is literally a toddler. She uses Steel types, so Boogeyman takes a lead here. We can safely get off two bulk ups on a Copper Raja, then Drain Punch a Metal Elephant, taking it out and healing us back up. Much like the last fight, the rest of her team gets one-shotted by Drain Punches and Shadow Punches. Well, Magnazone technically survives because of Sturdy, but goes down on the next turn. Even her ace Tinker Tong is helpless and is punched straight in the face, giving us another win. Now it's Larry's turn to embarrass this so-called Elite Four. Heartless has been feeling left out, so I give him some love. With no setup moves and just an expert belt, this is what happens. The last member of the Elite Fall is Hassel and his dragons, and I continue the trend of starting with a different Pokemon for each fight. This time it's Teddy's turn. Right off the bat, a Super Fang from Noivern deals exactly 50% damage to us. We follow up with a big, quad effective Ice Punch from Teddy, taking it out. Next is Dragalgi, and expecting a poison move, I terrestrialize into a Steel type and land an Ice Punch, which is just short from the kill. As expected, Dragalgi goes for a Sludge Bomb, having no effect while allowing me to take it out on the next turn. Now it's Hacturus, and this thing scares me. I switch in Russo to get off an Intimidate while also eating a Crunch. Salad then switches in, and a Dazzling Gleam followed by a Giga Drain is enough to get the kill. The Queen hasn't seen much action, so I switch her in, and she laughs at the pathetic damage from a Dragon Rush. She then strikes back with an X Scissor, taking out the Apple. Last is Baxcalibur, and this thing terrestrializes and goes for a huge brick break, doing massive damage. We hit back with an Iron Head, but we need to switch in another Pokemon. Expecting another brick break, Boogeyman comes in for free as it doesn't affect me. We then hit hard with a Drain Punch before taking insane damage from a Glaive Rush. 
thankfully we can outspeed and take it out on the next turn with a drain punch. Um, Hassel, uh, are you okay? And finally, we've defeated all four members of the Elite Four, and now we can take on the champion, Gita. We make our way outside, and Gita is waiting for us. She leads with Espartha, and I have Boogeyman out. I go for a bulk up, raising my stats, while Espartha also copies my stat changes thanks to its ability, Opportunist. We take massive damage from a Lumia crash, and our special defense has dropped. Boogeyman then terrestrializes into a fairy type, as we want to bait out King Gambit, while also taking out the Espartha with a Shadow Punch. As expected, King Gambit comes out and a Drain Punch absolutely obliterates it, healing me back up. Gita then brings in Avlug, and this is a physical defense wall, surviving a plus one Drain Punch, but we're also bulky enough to eat the Earthquake it responds with before following up with another Drain Punch. Now to Hooker Goat, who is actually a deceivingly strong Pokemon by the way, but all it takes is a couple more Drain Punches to take it out and keep me healthy. Her Veluza switches in and is destroyed with a single Shadow Punch. And finally, her Ace Glamora becomes a pure Rock type, allowing one more Drain Punch to get the kill and defeat the champion, Gita. Before we can truly end the Victory Road quest, we still have to take on and beat Nimona. But before that, I want to wrap up a few other quests first. Arvin is waiting for us outside the lighthouse and wants to pick a fight with us. Teddy takes a leap, and right off the bat, a close combat destroys the Greedon. Now it's Gaga Knuckle, and this pile of bricks is smashed into dust with a close combat. Toad Scroll is next, and for some reason I thought this was a poison ground type, so I switch in Salad, terrestrializing going for a water terror blast, only to realize it was not very effective. Teddy switches back in and takes big damage from a power whip before ice punching the stupid mushroom to its death. Scovillian switches in, and Teddy is pretty low on health, so Heartless tags in, eating a fire blast, then taking it out with a super effective power gem. Cloyster also can't handle a power gem, and it goes down in a single hit. Last is his ace, Mabostiff, so the queen comes in, eats a couple of fire fangs, before finishing off Arvin's dog with a super effective X scissor. With that battle done, we have completed the path of legend. Now it's direct a clavel that needs to be dealt with. The queen holding a chester berry makes this fight free. We set up with the sword stance, while Orangaroo goes for a yawn, making us drowsy. A Kauto Cleave eliminates the Oranguru while the Chestoberry wakes me up from sleep. Gyarados is next in and intimidates the Queen. However, she has a defiant ability, sharply raising her attack. Expecting an Earthquake, I terrestrialize into a Bug type only to outspeed and one shot the Gyarados anyway. The rest of Director Clavel's team doesn't put up much of a fight and the Queen outspeeds them and picks them apart one by one. Now bow down before the overwhelming might of Team Star's power. Um, that came out of nowhere. The Queen takes charge by setting up and starts one-shotting Penny's Pokemon. This battle isn't too much trouble as they all go down like flies. Jolteon does spice things up by outspeeding and hitting me with a big thunder and paralyzing the Queen. We don't get fully paralyzed and we can take it out, but now the Queen is vulnerable. Heartless tags in and can finish off the Leafeon and the Terrestrialized Sylveon with some stab super effective Venoshocks beating Team Star's big boss. There's a heartwarming Team Star reunion scene, and now we've completed the Starfall Street quest. Last, but certainly not least, well, actually, maybe it is, we have the all-out battle with Nimona. Boogeyman terrestrializes into a fairy type and can start bulking up in front of a Lycan Rock. After three bulk ups from the Boogeyman, he went to work. Victory Road complete. Now there's one last quest that needs to be done before we can truly finish the game. And that is rescuing Professor Turo from Area Zero, the Way Home quest. Nimona, Arvin, and even Penny team up with me as we make our way down to the deepest part of Paldea, Area Zero. And yes, we are still playing a Nintendo Switch game and not the Nintendo 64. We get down to the Zero Lab, unlocking the entrance only for a bunch of future Pokemon to bust out. The rest of the gang decide to deal with them, and I go straight for the Professor. Once inside, we learn that Professor Turu is actually a robot AI, and has been dead for years after a miscalculated explosion. Also, this Giga Chad exclusively uses Master Balls. He explains that he lured us down here to help him deactivate the time machine that he created with the Professor, as the future Pokemon have started to run rampant. Once at the deepest part of Area Zero, the Professor also warns us that he's programmed to attack us as a security measure to keep the time machine active. Okay, so can we deactivate you first, Professor, or... Too late, the guy's already lost the plot. Professor Turo drops his first Master Ball, bringing out Iron Mon. 
I lead with Boogeyman and I can Tresselize going for a bulk up and eating a neutral air slash. Knowing a poison move is heading my way, I go straight for an Earthquake, which is four times effective against his Volcarona clone. Iron Hands drops it next, going for a fake out, but you can't flinch the Boogeyman, so we respond with a super effective plus one Earthquake, which is still not enough to take it out. We follow up with a Drain Punch, which gets a kill and gives us some small HP recovery. Now it's Iron Jugglers that joins the fight, and another big Drain Punch is just short from the KO, but completely recovers our health before taking a Flash Cannon. Another punch to the face does take it out though. Iron Thorns is a perfect matchup as a stab drain punch can take it out and now we're back to full HP. Professor Turo then switches an Iron Bundle who does outspeed and goes for a freeze dry. However, it doesn't matter as one more super effective drain punch gets a kill and keeps us at full HP for the ace Iron Valiant. Expecting a poison move, a hard switch in Heartless who eats it like a champ. Iron Valiant then goes for a big Psycho Cut, but Heartless can hold the line and deliver a massive Venom Shock, taking it out and beating the Professor and his future Pokemon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.